Welcome to this presentation on natural capital accounting. My name is Thomas Victor Wallow and I'm from the Department of Primary Industries and Regional Development. In this presentation, we will cover natural capital accounting. What is it? How can it be best used? What are the risks and opportunities with its use and how best to connect with the evolving natural capital markets? So what is natural capital? Natural capital is another term for the stock of renewable and non-renewable resources. For example, plants, animals, air, water, soils or minerals that combine to yield a flow of benefits to people. An important aspect of natural capital is how we see ourselves within that system. What is natural capital accounting? How we see ourselves within natural capital determines how we account for it. Traditionally, parts of natural capital have been seen as an externality, but this is now changing with natural capital accounting providing a holistic view. Natural capital accounting is a tool to measure the changes in the natural capital stock, in accounting terms known as assets, at a variety of scales. Natural capital assets combine to provide value through ecosystem services. The natural capital assets are represented within accounting and reporting systems at international, national, state, regional and enterprise levels. Ecosystem value breaks down into cultural, societal, environmental and economic aspects. Four key aspects of natural capital are, number one, utilising natural capital to drive cultural, environmental and economic values growth. Number two, incorporating natural capital into policies, management practices and decision making processes. For example, in January of this year, 2023, a system of natural capital accounting was proposed as a national strategy to be integrated into the US national accounts. And I quote from this document, natural assets like land and water underpin businesses, enhance quality of life and act as a stabilizing force for economic prosperity and opportunity. They also help counteract the destabilizing risks to our environment and markets caused by climate change and nature loss. Yet, the connections between nature and the economy are not currently reflected in our national economic statistics. When the government spends $1 on re to restore a coral reef or a forest that will attract tourism, supply water or clean the air, our current system does not capture the economic value of this investment. The national strategy gives us a path to change that. Clearly measuring the quality and value of natural capital will enable more accurate economic growth forecasts and facilitate a more complete picture of economic progress to inform how we prioritise investments. The third key aspect, establishing and benchmarking qualitative and quantitative natural capital measurements, metrics and data integrity, and the fourth key aspect, importance of governance in establishing overarching frameworks which embed co-investment and public interest aspects. This governance includes third party assurance, which is most important. The predicted size of the natural capital market is significant. The World Economic Forum recently forecasted that 15 nature positive transitions could generate up to 10.1 trillion in annual business value and create 395 million jobs by 2030. But how do we connect to this market that we're transitioning towards? Suggested areas of interest can be seen as scale, system and syndicate, which I'll discuss shortly. Essentially, we want to use natural capital accounting to put nature on the balance sheet. We can then build a robust set of environmental economic accounts and integrate them into public and private decision making to help harmonise reporting across jurisdictions and governments. The government role can be seen as developing and implementing policy, incentives and grants, education, benchmarking, market regulation and definition. The first area of interest is scale. Financial interest, including impact investment, is attracted to economies of scale. Natural capital accounting is very useful to define areas of interest along a national, state, regional and organisational scale. 
Environmentally, the way nature operates is on scale and it knows no boundary. Risks and opportunities managed on scale often provide better insights. In this diagram, primary producer A and B are interdependent and both will benefit if actions on their property were taken to improve natural capital value within the catchment, such as biodiversity and remnant native vegetation and improved water quality. Across this catchment or region, the combined benefits are greater than the sum of their individual organisational parts. It's ideal to cover ecosystems and regions to get best outcomes. Reduction of costs, reduction in soil sampling costs without reducing quality by operating across larger areas is possible using this approach. And if you work on scale, more powerful stories can be developed for markets and investors. System allows for a holistic, interconnected view. Nature is a complex system and should be recognised as such. System enables more informed decision making and best practice. Soil organic carbon can be seen as part of soil organic matter. Soils, water, vegetation, flora and fauna and people can be seen as interconnected and interdependent. For example, the biogenic carbon cycle is a good example of system thinking beyond a single focus on entric methane emissions. Interconnected potential, including farming practice, biodiversity, carbon farming and more, can be contained within systems thinking. Using a system view, you can properly incorporate First Nations and Aboriginal views, including cultural framework. The final area of interest is syndicate. Obviously, scale, system and syndicate is an alliteration. However, the definition of syndicate is appropriate in this case. A group of individuals or organisations combined to promote a common interest. It makes sense in this case. Management of and accounting for natural capital to enable scale. Syndicate represents an opportunity for collaboration to produce a total that is greater than the sum of its parts. Natural capital lends itself to syndicates like grower groups, NRMs, Aboriginal enterprises, ag tech and primary production organisations working together. You can use frameworks like accounting for nature to drive standardisation and evidence-based analysis that is independently audited. The frameworks and methodologies enforce quality requirements that meet certification standards. This reduces the risk of greenwashing. Natural capital accounting provides the information required to meet the expectations of the investment and regulatory markets of the future. The natural capital accounting evidence base can be used to guide assessment of risks and opportunities, for example, using the Task Force for Nature Related Financial Disclosure, Principles and Framework, which requires reporting that has market usability, is science based, embraces nature related risks, is purpose driven is integrated and adaptive, meets the climate nature nexus and is globally inclusive. So what are the benefits of natural capital accounting? I'll split this into three sections, economic, environmental and social. If you overlay the areas of interest, scale, system and syndicate, you can gain better value by collaborating together and taking these approaches, you can get more. This applies to all section benefits. The economic benefits can be seen as access to markets, diversity of income streams, reduced interest rates and reduced premiums, the enabling of insetting against emissions using sequestration, which enable access to the markets of the future. Natural asset definition is an additional asset base on your accounts and the ability to access natural capital accounting investor markets, which are the markets of the future. The second set of benefits is environmental. By using natural capital accounting for extension and adoption, you can look to reduce heat, improve ground cover, reduce erosion and improve your natural asset definition and maintenance. It will also enable you to do things such as system water conservation. This is going to be very important in a future which is hotter and drier. The third type of benefit is social and cultural. By adopting natural capital accounting, you are able to develop a social licence to operate and be seen as part of the solution. 
you can enable a sustainable environment of the future for yourself and for your successors. And you can develop a social asset that can be enjoyed in the future. So in conclusion, look around and consider how you might collaborate with others to best leverage this opportunity. Think on scale and consider the system that natural capital represents. And think of natural capital accounting as a way to articulate the value that you provide. This enables proper recognition of the public good that you create and provides the funding for you to make the change. Thanks for taking the time to view this presentation. I hope you found it to be informative. Should you require more information, please navigate to the URL in the bottom left corner of the page or scan the QR code.